So welcome to the Kentucky Hemp Lecture Series. And uh, so I'm going to be your host, Johnny Tsunami. <laughs> uh, this is for Andy Plunkett, too. So I'm going to do this whole series uh, for uh, dedication to a Andy Plunkett. And I'm using the Occupy mask. I don't, it's hemp. I don't mind, like, actually talking about it. But uh, I just got, you know. I got this face going on here, and uh, a little bit embarrassed about it. Compliments of the LMPD. Go fuck yourselves. And uh, so, anyways, uh, yeah, carrying on. So, the hip flexors. So, I'm going to start out with five questions, and then we're going to go on from there. So, five questions. What does the Tuscarora, the Tuscarora, the six-member tribe of the Iroquois Confederacy, federalism, what do they mean? So what is the, the meaning of the tribe? So the Cherokee, they got a, a meaning. The, the Shawnee, the Chickasaw. What does the Tuscarora, what does it mean? Question two. Name five of the 11, maybe 12 presidents who smoked marijuana. So we've had 44 presidents throughout American history. Name 12 or name five of those 12 presidents who have smoked marijuana. And after each question, you can pause it and then look to everybody else and see if they know the thing. So i got five questions. Number three, what's the difference between hemp and marijuana? What's the difference? Number four, when was the first European settlement in Kentucky? What's the first year of hemp growth by the European settlers? So when did the Europeans get into Kentucky and then when did they start growing hemp? Five. Which actor from Cheers was faced with spending one year in a Kentucky jail and a $500 fine who was ultimately acquitted for planting four seeds in Kentucky soil in 1996? So what actor from Cheers was faced with one year in jail and $500 fine, but ultimately he was acquitted, but he did this in 1996 for planting four hemp seeds? Okay. So... The first question is, what does Tuscarora mean? Okay, so you got the Iroquois Confederacy, you got the six nations of the Iroquois Confederacy, the Oneida, the Oneida, the Onondaga, and all these other ones. But the Tuscarora, they literally mean the hemp gatherers, the hemp people. Sometimes they're called the shirt people. Their shirts were woven into hemp fiber. They use indigenous hemp for clothes and medicine. So there's actual Indian tribe that is named for the hemp, for hemp, uh, cannabis sativa. Hemp is indigenous to North America. It, it, it didn't start here, but when the Europeans came to North America, it was already here. They use, uh, the Tuscarora people use hemp for clothing and medicine. The origin story of the Tuscarora people actually is this. So you got the, the creator, right? You got God who placed the Tuscarora on Turtle Island which is North America. They call North America Turtle Island. The whole continent, right? So the, the creator was the one who actually put them here, and they give them divine instructions to be caretakers of the earth. Make sure you take care of this Turtle Island. So in heaven, in the sky world, you had this big tree of life. So up in heaven, you got this big tree of life, and it grew that it was, uh, it, it grew to be, it was a very special tree, okay, to the people of the sky world. It was like the tree of life, right? So the people of the sky world, Really love this big tree. Now, beneath the tree, there's a big hole. And the, uh, the big hole is where the entrance to Earth was, and hence Turtle Island. A sky woman was walking by, and she had a child in her arm, and then she fell. And actually, I, she, I guess she had one hand, one arm with the child, and then as she fell, she grabbed with her other hand, and she grabbed a, a chunk of dirt. So uh, she clutched in her hand uh, some of the dirt from the sky world, and in that dirt was cannabis sativa. It was, there was a seed for marijuana. The sky woman brought the cannabis seed to earth when she fell from the sky. She had grabbed the seeds from the tree of life, and that's how they came to earth with her. All the gifts of earth fell from the sky, but the Tuscarora people were specifically given the cannabis seed. The Tuscarora were given instructions on how to take care of it, how to use it, how to pray with it. The white-tailed deer came and they showed the Tuscarora people where they could find it. They were told that it was the seed of peace, the seed of life. Some background about the Tuscarora people. The Tuscarora people originally were from North Carolina until the Tuscarora War. 
And then that's when uh, the North Carolina settlers, the Europeans, had got Chief Tom Blunt. And I'm not kidding about that name. Tom Blunt, who actually turns out to be a total asshole, of the northern Tuscarora to conquer the southern Tuscarora under Chief Hancock. So Chief Hancock gets mad at the European settlers, starts a war, starts killing them, and then the settlers was able to co-op Chief Tom Blunt of the northern Tuscarora to attack Chief Hancock. So he's got a cool name, Tom Blunt, but he turned out to be a total asshole. Okay, so after the Tuscarora War, the 1711, the Tuscarora moved to New York. So it didn't even help Tom Blunt. Tom Blunt was sitting there helping the settlers, but eventually they pushed all the Tuscarora people out of North Carolina. They had to move to New York. Then they blended with the Iroquois. The Iroquois actually let them in. The Seneca people actually let them in, which they should have done. Because the Tuscarora people were b backstabbing, you know, uh, they had fought against their own people, the Tuscarora War. And then when they go to uh, live in New York with the Iroquois, when the American Revolution happened, all the Iroquois were against the American colonists, except for the Tuscarora. The Tuscarora people were fighting with George Washington, cannot talk cash, the town destroyer, to help wipe out all the rest of the Iroquois people of nor northern New York. So... Uh, and then the few people who survived that war eventually moved to Canada. So that's that's sort of a very quick history of the Tuscarora people. But they're known as the hemp gatherers, okay? So hemp is indigenous to the continent. And they, they even uh, there's a people, a, a Native American tribe who was named after this, uh, this wonderful gift from God, okay? This plant that's got over 25,000 uses. So I asked, name five of the 12 presidents who smoked marijuana. Who are the five of the 12 presidents, okay? So any five would work, but uh, you can just go with the recent ones. That's the easy one. Barack Obama, George W. Bush, Bill Clinton. So basically in the modern age, everybody, right? Everybody I've known. Um, I guess there was a, a, 82 is when I was born. That would have been, uh, that'd been Ronald Reagan and Bo Daddy Bush. So that's, that's two presidents. I'm not, I don't know. They should have. They seem to be pretty... Uh, <laughs> uptight people, but for since 1992, for the last 22 years, so anybody that is 22 years or younger, their entire lives, the leader of the free world uh, uh, hypocritically enforces the war, war on drugs when they themselves were actual potheads. So that's three, right? Barack Obama, George W. Bush, Bill Clinton. He didn't inhale. Don't forget, Bill Clinton didn't inhale. Uh, Barack Obama, George W. Bush, then you have Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson actually passed out spice blends of marijuana to his friends, right? Could you imagine actually Thomas Jefferson coming up to your house and having a spice blend of marijuana and then smoking it with you? Thomas Jefferson is also known for writing the Declaration of Independence. That piece of paper was written on hemp paper. George Washington, John Adams both raised it, smoked it. Louisville's own Zachary Taylor. Uh, the, the big hero of the Mexican-American War, who eventually redeems himself at the very end of his life. He turns out he was a genocidal maniac, but in uh, the very end of his life, he actually turned out to be an okay guy. Check out Zachary Taylor. John F. Kennedy, he had lots of problems, but John F. Kennedy was definitely smoking pot with Marilyn Monroe. Franklin Pierce. Franklin Pierce said the only good thing about the Mexican-American War was the marijuana. Interesting how war does that to people. Vietnam, they brought marijuana and other drugs back from Vietnam. Andrew Jackson, he would smoke lots of marijuana with his troops. So that's Andrew Jackson. James Monroe, he smoked it when he was the ambassador to France. And then he continued to smoke it until his death at the age of 73. James Madison, he's the uh, known for the, uh, 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 the Constitution. He's the father of the U.S. Constitution. And what was the Constitution written on? Hemp paper. That's exactly right. So actually, James Monroe I just mentioned, but James Madison also smoked it, and he said that the marijuana had gave him insight to creating a new nation. So marijuana helped create America. They, uh, the, very, the founding fathers were all raising it, saying let's all raise it. So it's been embedded in, in American culture since the very beginning, just like tobacco too, right? Jamestown, that's how Jamestown survived, because they had tobacco. But Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, John Adams, Zachary Taylor, John F. Kennedy, Franklin Pierce, Andrew Jackson, James Monroe, James Madison, Barack Obama, George W. Bush, Bill Clinton. Those are the presidents that all smoked marijuana. 
What's the difference between hemp and marijuana? Not a fucking thing. <laughs> so nothing. It's, it's just how it's cultivated. There is nothing. It's the very same plant as cannabis sativa. It's the same plant. It's just how it's cultivated. Hemp is uh, planted really close together, so it's mostly stalks. And uh, marijuana is planted uh, very far apart, so that way it blooms. And then you can get the flowers and the THC from which those flowers come from. So the cultivation does change the chemical makeup of it because, you know, the stalk of a corn is different than the ear of a corn. The stalk of a tomato plant is different than the actual tomato. So the marijuana is the bud, you know, it's the fruit that comes out of it, whereas hemp is the fiber and the, uh, the long strands or long pieces that come from the, the, the stalk of the plant, right? So... That's, that's the third question. Fourth question, when was uh, your, the first European settlement in Kentucky? When was the first year of hemp? And 1774 is when Harrodstown, Harrodsburg, by James Harrod, that's when he colonized Kentucky, 1774. Okay, so that's, you know, that's two years right before the revolution. Um, and really, there wasn't a revolution in Kentucky. They were just killing Indians in Kentucky. But 1774, the white people started colonizing. And then the next year, 1775, they were raising hemp. So as soon as white people got here, they were raising hemp. They've been raising hemp in Kentucky the whole time. Number one cash crop in Kentucky, marijuana. And now that we legalize hemp, we're going to be seeing hemp fields all over the place. Um, and good. You have to have a license, and it's only for academic research purposes. Only for academic research purposes. But you can actually grow it and sell it if you want to now, too. If the James Cover accepts your application. So far, he's accepted... At first I heard seven, now I've heard hundreds, so I guess the more uh, applications that are put in, the more, um, the more that are going to get approved. So the last question, which actor from Cheers was faced with spending one year in Kentucky jail on a $500 fine, but was ultimately acquitted for planting four hemp seeds in Kentucky soil in 1996? Woody Harrelson, okay? So Woody uh, Harrelson was the person that actually did that. He's the one that started a hip movement here, uh, 1996. So that think about how Akron, you know, that's 18 years ago, Woody Harrelson had started the, the idea, the thinking, that we need to do something different uh, right here in Kentucky. So good for Kentucky that the, that jury did not convict Woody Harrelson. Theoretically, they could have put Woody Harrelson in prison for a year and given him a $500 fine because that's, you know, that's backwards Kentucky. That's what they do. Uh, Rand Paul, uh, basically the Republicans are the ones that got it legalized. The Democrats in Kentucky, are, they have no principles. They don't stand for anything. Like Allison Lundergan Grimes, she will not take a stand on marijuana. She won't say anything about it. All she'll say is she agrees with the current laws that the Republicans already passed. Oh, yeah, wow, that's, that's so brave there, Allison Lundergan Grimes. So they're going to play moderate. And, and if Mitch McConnell says he will legalize marijuana, I'll vote for Mitch McConnell because that's an important issue. There's four big issues. There's the war, there's land reform, there's nationalizing coal, and then there's uh, legalizing marijuana. If uh, uh, Kentucky full-blown legalizes marijuana, I will vote for Mitch McConnell. I don't think Allison Leonard Grimes will actually take the step, but let's 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 see the history of uh, of the hemp. Okay, so here's what happened in Kentucky, just to give you background. So you have March 28, 2013, the Kentucky legislature legalized the raising of hemp with Senate Bill 50. Steve Brashear signs the legalization of hemp farms bill on April 10, 2013. So and this is after he says, "Hold on, I gotta wait and read over it and, and talk to the cops." So Steve Brashear is not pushing forward. He's very much against marijuana. So is Jack Conway. These are all Allison Lundergan Grimes' friends. There's no way. Uh, I, I hope she actually does come out in favor of legalization of marijuana. But I don't. I do not expect anything from Allison. I think she's going to play a defensive campaign. She's going to have a blank slate. And she's going to lose. Because Mitch McConnell has no pulse. But if she is trying to play defensive to a person with no pulse. No, no pulse. She'll have to be a corpse, right? He's a pulse, and, and you have to wait for a punch from somebody who doesn't even have a pulse. So you'll have to be like a, a zombie, right? A corpse. Anyways, April 10, 2013, Kentucky legalizes hemp. Woo! But that's state law, and we live in a federal government. We got that. We stole that from the Iroquois Confederacy. 
uh, there's the federal government and the state government. And actually, there's the supremacy clause. So the federal government thinks that they can do whatever they want to do. But the state uh, has its own jurisdiction. The Tenth Amendment says anything that is not covered by the feds is what the states can do on their own. So that's a big date. Mark that on your calendar. April 10th, 2013 is when Kentucky had legalized hemp. And uh, I think I'm actually going to cut this short so it's a 15-minute video. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to keep on... Uh, uh, educating you all.